10 Reasons Why Rent Is So High In The United States Operators in the real estate business have coined the phrase housing recession to explain the retrogressive economic trend in the housing sector of the United States. Rents reached an all-time peak in 2022. That year, the median monthly rent topped $2,000 for the first time ever, while in some places it upped nearly 50% since 2020. If, like over 100 million other Americans, you're living in a rented house or apartment, you may be wondering why it has become so expensive to be a renter. You will then agree that rent is one of the ways inflation is felt in people's lives. This video takes a look at the question, why rent is so high in the US? 1. Overall inflation This is the best place to start, looking at the matter of the increase in rent in the US. Is there anyone here that can deny the reality of inflation in the country as in other parts of the world? From June 2021 to June 2022, the country recorded a 9% year-over-year inflation rate for all items. That was the highest rate since the 9.6% rate it recorded from November 1980 to November 1981. Taking it from there, is it realistic to expect the housing sector to be exempted? The fact is, no sector is insulated against this ravaging inflation. Besides the overall inflation, sector-specific inflation may naturally contribute to expensive rent. Economists and news commentators have not been mincing words on this, stressing how year-over-year -year inflation rates have reached the ceiling in 2022 and the effect it'll have on rents. 2. Less new home construction Another longer-term factor that contributes to higher rent in the country is the decline in the supply of rental housing units. Data from the US Census Bureau in its 2020 American Community Survey reveals a decline in the construction of new housing units. This decline starts to be noticeable after the housing and real estate market began to contract in 2006, just before the 2008 meltdown. Following the crash of the housing market in the early 2000s, the decline in new home construction remained for a decade. Initially, it was felt by realtors and home buyers. The effect of that dip later radiates to the renters. This is likely one of the most significant factors affecting the cost and contributing to the unrelenting rise in rental prices. 3. Effect of Pandemic in the early days of the pandemic in 2020, people suddenly found that they needed to be spending a lot more time at home. Some had to move back in with their parents. This created a need for more space and, in effect, more homes. The families who could afford to moved from cities to the suburbs to get more spaces to spread out. Back then, there wasn't a shortage of apartments as they were available in sufficient quantities. Many renters could make their choices from a wide range of affordable apartments. They had the flexibility and were in control. However, a lot of those arrangements were only temporary. Just a few people really settled down. It was found out that many people quickly changed their homes as soon as the pandemic was put under control. The trend eventually increases the pressure on rent. 4. Remote work This is another effect of the pandemic. It opened the eyes of many executives to working from home. Those who could work from home realized their newfound freedom and decided to take the advantage of it. This creates the need for more space in homes. People were looking to move to bigger homes because the extra room can be easily converted into an office or a workshop. A lot of cities in the US didn't have enough places to rent as other factors were already putting pressure on the available homes. So those cities weren't designed for a sudden crush of new residents. Rents are bound to be high and continue in that trend. 5. Landlords are selling their homes Making matters worse, a lot of landlords decided to dispose of rental units, selling them as condominiums when they realized that property values are skyrocketing. What do you think would become a lot of those already living in those rental units? They were forced back into the rental market. As a result, prices climbed higher. While prices continued to rise, people kept rushing into the rental market. Since some of them already had a little extra cushion, probably built up from their savings, the stock market, or from pandemic benefits, they were willing to stretch their budgets a bit more, even as they saw prices going up. Unfortunately, this caused suffering for others who were at risk of losing their homes. That was at a time when rental assistance was not forthcoming to trickle out and while an eviction moratorium was expiring. 6. 
trend toward renting replacing the desire to own. For a moment, let's involve you in this. If you are living in America, are you living in a rented apartment or your purchased apartment? If you are living in a rented apartment, why are you not living in an owner-occupied? For most people, the cost of buying a home isn't yet within reach, and that's not one of the shortest-term goals if they ever have that goal. Get it right, folks. This is not to lay it at the feet of anyone. We're just proving a point here. One additional development putting upward pressure on the cost of rent is the increase in the number of people embracing rental units instead of owner-occupied units. Other data from the Census Bureau show that close to 16 million householders moved into an owner-occupied unit in 2015 or later. By contrast, almost 25 million householders moved into a renter-occupied unit in 2015 or later. And looking at the data about the total occupied housing units, we find that the trend is similar for both owner-occupied and renter-occupied housing units. In 2020, there were more than 122.3 million total occupied housing units, but only 12.9% of occupants moved into the homes they owned in 2015 or later, while 20.4% of them moved into homes they rented in 2015 or later. We deduce from this that the faster growth of the desire to rent households compared to owners occupying households is a very serious factor that can't be ignored when determining why rent is so high in the US. 7. Change in the composition of rental housing The Census Bureau data revealed yet another telling data point, the composition of renter-occupied housing units. We're looking to the type of housing units that renters are occupying. There is a steady shift in trend from one-bedrooms to studio rentals. In 2015, for instance, 1.98 million renter-occupied housing units had no bedrooms. These are housing units known as studios. But by 2020, that number had gone up to 2.5 million. That's equivalent to a 25.5% rise in renter-occupied housing units without bedrooms and studios from 2015 to 2020. It can be a factor in explaining why rent is so expensive since it's a reflection of increasing demand for studio rental units which appear to be cheaper than one-bedroom apartments. 8. High inflation rates for rent-related costs we can't successfully explain why rent is so high without looking at rent-related costs. If you view things again from the perspective of landlords, that'll be clearer. It's common for them to pass certain costs onto their tenants. These include repairs, appliances and maintenance. When these get more expensive, the natural effect is that rents would go up. 9. Poor support from the suburbs Almost every city in the US depends on its suburbs to provide housing units from where those working jobs in the major cities could be commuting to their jobs. These are expected to cushion the strain on its housing market. That's why many cities don't feel the need to construct more housing units. However, those suburbs aren't providing enough support for their cities. They're building less and less housing than ever. If the suburbs have been building enough houses, the supply of houses would have matched or surpassed the demand for them. Following the law of demand and supply, the rent wouldn't have been this high in the country. 10. The legislative restriction In a bid to strengthen and stabilize their housing sector, many states in the country are enacting laws regulating what, when and how to build houses. Economists and analysts believe that these laws are clogs in the wheel of their business progress. Of course, those states' goal generally is to provide security and ensure there are enough houses. The long-term effect of that will be an increase in the price of homes. It's your turn. How does it feel to rent a house in the country? In your own opinion, why is rent so high in the United States? Please tell us in your comment.